What I wanted to share with you guys in this specific area is the fact that the deer are spending a lot of time in here super early evening. So you can't really... things I wanted to share with you guys. The deer are using this area as a travel corridor. Yeah, there was a couple coming up through. They must have smelled my bug spray. <laughs> yeah, they're still hanging out right down here. I'm way out here in the middle of public land. The deer are just standing down there watching me talk. I was talking pretty loud there for a minute. You think you're looking at open hardwoods. Don't let that fool you because there's a lot of transitions right here in this area on public land. But I wanted to show you guys this overlooked spot because I overlooked this place for quite a few years. I'd walk by and I'd be like, oh, that looks pretty open right there. I don't think I'm gonna hunt that. And a lot of us will make that decision based off of what we see instead of actually physically getting in there and looking at the whole area. So follow along. We're going to look at some buck rubs. We're going to look at some of the train. So right here is the start of one rub line. And it goes down that direction. Now these rubs are from early season last year. You can see the center of the rub starts here goes up to about here, but I'm not seeing any tine marks above or below. Now this is a pretty good sized deer. Maybe a two year old. Might be 10 to 12 inches wide is what I'm seeing. Let me know what you guys think of this. Let's move on to the next one. another rub you can tell it's the same buck it's about the same distance no time marks above or below it and it's about the same height oh, this is just one of those rub lines here it is again about the same width same height so we know this is the same buck making these rubs in this specific spot. I know there's a few spots here. It looks like it's open hardwood. But if you take a look around, there's good transitions here. It gets thick. There's a finger right here. There's a bench right here. And they're using this trailer coming out through here, hitting these rubs to go for food. And food isn't close to here. And neither is bedding. I figured that out last year. But if you look, there's a couple fingers. There's a finger right there in a the bench. There's a finger right here where I'm standing on. In that direction, about 70 yards, there's another finger with a transition. And what I'm seeing here is these fingers are pretty thick. Some pines, saplings, some oaks. They're not spending a whole lot of time out here in the open. They're following all these transition lines out through here. And they're doing it pretty consistently towards the evening, just before dark. Anyway, let's move on to the other rub line. This next rub line I wanna show you guys, you can really tell there's multiple bucks in here because there's rubs of all different sizes. And if I'm right, there's gonna be a bunch of scrapes out here as well, near those rub lines. So we know those bucks are coming through here and they're scenting those scrapes. Now a lot of the rubs might be territorial rubs, but they're also rubbing some of the little stuff just to leave their scent to let other deer know that they're in here. There's another one from 
early season last year. Now this one's a little different. Rub starts here and the tines come all the way up into here. I might be the big eight pointer doing this one. Okay. Over here's another one. I'll keep moving you showing these rubs. Alright, again, it's not very wide here, but the time bar is coming all the way up into here. You can see that. I'll have to say it's the same buck making those rubs over there. So just right here in this tiny area, we're looking at two different bucks. It's pretty interesting. Alright, let's keep moving. There we got a fresh scrape. Of course, that rub line's right there. There's two rub lines right there. And then there's a rub line over here. Two different bucks. That's a smaller one. I'm pretty sure that's one of the smaller bucks. Probably a little six-pointer that was in here. I'll tell you what. All these bucks in early season were spending a lot of time together. move on to the next rub line. Anyway, you can see all these little rubs in here. Now this could have been any of the bucks. Could have been a big buck. Could have been a little bucks. Because even the bigger bucks will just crash up stuff like this and leave their scent. I really wanted to show you guys look how open it is right here you got a finger over there it's thick with saplings and dogwoods and pines and a little freshwater stream and there's another finger right here that I'm standing on if you look there's just little patches these dogwoods and pines and then there's little open trails right here there's one and there's one and there's a rub line on each one of these and we know that when deer travel, they like to use these little heavy transitions. And right here, there's quite a few pinch points. There's quite a few times where I'd walk by down there in the bottom and look up here and think, man, that's too open. I can't hunt that. But as I made my way up here, I started seeing all these little patches and all these trails here that weave in and out. And they all had rub lines on them. Super heavy trails and there were scrapes everywhere. Alright, so we have the rub lines. And you can see right here is a scrape. And it's pretty fresh. They're hitting this pretty hard. And in this area, it's mostly a west wind. When I was over that direction just a couple minutes ago, I had a couple deer come up through. Now we have our wind going that direction. So they could have been coming up through here, set checking these scrapes. A deer will leave scrapes open all year long. over to the next rub. Right, here's another rub. This one's pretty big. I think this one might actually be the 10 pointer that's in here. Center of the rub starts here and you can see the time marks coming all the way up here. The 
from what I saw in the pictures that I had on my trail camera from last year, he's at least 16 to 20 inches wide. He's pretty wide. And he's got good mass on him. Here's another scrape. It's still open and they're using it. And over here, there's an old rub. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. I wanted to take you with and show you some of these rubs in an area where a lot of hunters will overlook. And this is one of those areas you don't want to overlook. I understand you're not hunting close to bedding here. You're not hunting close to a food source. This is in between a bedding and a food source by uh, quite a bit. But the deer are using this quite a bit as a travel corridor. It's between food and bedding, and they're using this quite a bit early evening. So this is a good spot to get in here and hunt the afternoon, early evening. Now standing here in this location, to my south, about three quarters of the way up the mountain, there's a bunch of oak flats. And then to the north, there's a creek and a few clear cuts. So we got two food sources on the bottom side and the top side. And this area is right in between both of those. It's another reason I wanted to show you this area. In a spot like this, deer are still making their transition from winter to summer spots. And they'll hang out in here until sometime late November. So if you're bow hunting, and you come across an area like this where you think it's all open hardwood, get in there a little bit deeper and take a good look because you might find all these transitions and pinch points and funnels. And that's where you're gonna find the deer traveling. It's May 8th, it's 3.30 in the afternoon. And I just had some deer on film and I was talking out loud. I'm surprised they didn't hear me sooner. So the deer are definitely traveling through here in the afternoon towards the evening. So if I wanted to get in here and hunt it, I would definitely not hunt this spot in the morning. I should probably kick everything out of here. I would definitely come in here and hunt this spot in the evening. I know we didn't get to spend a lot of times on rubs and scrapes, but the rubs I did show you are from multiple bucks. I just wanted to get in here and give you guys a peek of what I'm looking at and the transitions that I'm hunting. I wanted to show you guys this area because this is one of those spots that you don't want to overlook. It's one of those areas that hold multiple bucks as I just showed you guys the different size rubs. Now I've got a ton of other videos where I'm scouting multiple different terrain features, different food sources and bedding. So you can go over there and check them out. I'd really appreciate it. I'm gonna jump off of here and go do some fishing. See you guys later.